All right, today, guys, we're going to be doing a stabilizer shaft link replacement on this 2009 Chevrolet Cobalt. <clears throat> it's pretty straightforward, but uh, there are some different parts that you use depending on the options your car came with, and I'm going to go over that, as well as some problems you might have removing this. But here's the part on the diagram here. It attaches to the front strut bracket here, and then comes down here on the bottom and attaches to the, the stabilizer bar itself. It's held in by two 18-millimeter prevailing torque nuts. Now if we come over here and look at the shaft, this is what we're going to be doing. We're taking off this 18 millimeter bolt here and then the other one down at the bottom. Now what will often happen on these old ones is it will come off about part way and then you will get a situation where this guy is just spinning. That's part of why this is all worn out. And what you have to be able to do is get back in the back and there's some little flats that you can get a wrench on, 17 millimeter, typically with these, uh, with these genuine GM stabilizer bars. Let me get this flashlight back in a good place because it's overcast today. Typically, we can get this guy right in the back here. When I get this off, I'll be able to show you what I'm doing. Now, sometimes even that's not enough because this thing can easily be stripped out behind here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how you can deal with this. I, I knew this was going to happen because it happened on the uh, passenger side when I did it already before. So I'm going to get some other tools to show you how you can get back in here and deal with this problem where this nut has rusted onto the stud. All right, guys, I've put some PB Blaster on here to help with this. What you got going on is in the back of this guy, you can see where we were trying to get on the flats. Sometimes they're corroded or they're not enough there, and so just trying to get it off aware of the little bit of flat that's there. So the first thing I do when I get into this and I can't get it off the way I started is I stick a, a vice grip along this back piece. We try to get it off that way. So that's the next thing we're going to go do here. Usually you have to start with something small. This one might be too small. And we'll get this guy on there and see if that lets us get the kind of clearance that we need to grab this. Let's see if this works. Now sometimes you can get this. This has worked a little bit. We moved it off a slight bit. I'm going to try to tighten it up just a hair. Actually, I'm going to keep tightening because I want it to be a real tight fit on there. See so if we can get this off the rest of the way. All right, we got that one off. Now, this usually works. You can see we were grabbing this piece right here. If this doesn't work, what I found that will always work, if not, we might end up having to do it on the bottom. So you can get a pickle fork in here while it's still stuck in the bracket. And what you can do is you can separate these two. In fact, let me see if I can do it right now, if I can see where that nut went to. Kind of rolled under the car here. Don't have it handy at the moment. but I'll show it in a bit. But what you can do is you can pop this ball stud off. And what I found will always work 
is you can get a pipe wrench on that ball stud and he'll grab that thing pretty well. And what that actually looks like, because I had to do this on the passenger side, you'll end up grabbing it like this. And you can see where those teeth cut in there. But these pipe wrenches, because they're wedge shaped, they work really good at grabbing something like this and, and allow you to get it off. You can see I started with the vice grips on the passenger side, but just could not get it to hold on. Popped it off, used this, that took it right off. So we didn't have to go that far on the top. We'll see where we get on the bottom. So let's come back in a moment. All right, guys, uh, the bottom came off with just the vice grips as well. Uh, just to show you what I ended up doing, you take a small 2 by 4 You can get this guy uh, wedged in here a little bit on the tie rod and push him down just like this, just a little bit. You don't want to damage the bushing. You just want to push it down enough so that you can get your impact wrench, which you can see I've got down here, and you can come underneath. You know, I've got a couple of jack stands for safety reasons, and you can spin it right off. At this point, we've got this guy extracted. And so you can see the, the top is pretty well rounded off, and the bottom is also pretty well rounded off. And you can see where the corrosion had grabbed the nut in both cases. All right, so let's talk about what we replace this with. Now, to show you what we replace this with, we're going to have to go into the trunk. So let's do that. All right, so when you get back in the trunk, guys, you're going to lift up on the uh, driver's side carpet, and you're going to find this option sticker in the back of the vehicle. And the code we're interested in starts with an FE on most of these models. So this one's an FE1. Now, you might also want to take note of a 6A type code, because some of the older, like a 2005 or 2006, it might be... Uh, relevant to have the 6a and the 7a but most of the time just for the strut you're just going to excuse me for the uh, stabilizer link you're just going to need the fe code you might need the other codes for the springs or the struts so this is an fe1 so what i'll do is i'll roll the part numbers at the bottom but let's go ahead and take it the part the part number for this particular fe1 option all right so the part number for this fe1 code is 207-84686 and that's the one for a code FE1. There's an FE3, an FE5. I'll roll those other part numbers. And these struts, strut links, excuse me, these stabilizer links are all different lengths. But this is what the one that's most common, the FE1 looks like. So it'll have a protective piece on one end. Let's take that off for a second. And what you can see here is you can see the flats that they put on here are very small. Very small flats, so they easily corrode off or they can easily be stripped off. So that's why you want to you know, be careful. Sometimes, if it's not too bad, you can get it with a, a box end wrench like I started with, but then you have to graduate up to vice grips, and then sometimes you have to graduate up to popping this out when you're removing it and just uh, using the plumber's wrench. All right, but this is our part, and now all we're going to do is simply put it back on, and we're going to torque it down. So let's go do that. All right, guys, we've got this guy back in. 48 foot pounds, top and bottom, and we're all set to go now. Uh, the only thing I, you know, I, I also recommend you do is if you end up having the problems I showed in the beginning, getting one of these off because you're changing the strut or something like that, always replace it with a new one. And if you replace one on one side, always replace it on the other side too so they're matching. I hope this video helps you out. If you've got any questions or comments, just uh, leave them down below and I'll try to help. If you found this video useful, please hit that like button. And please subscribe if you find this kind of content interesting. Thanks for watching.